it wasn't necessarily the result that Toronto FC was looking for, but the one positive coming out of Saturday night is that they remain undefeated at home as they tied Colorado 1-1. One -one. Caroline Schwed and Gareth Wheeler here with you. And Gareth, I feel like the general consensus coming into Saturday night's game is that Colorado has not earned, until tonight, a point on the road, yeah. and that Toronto FC was going to be the side that comes out and defeats Colorado, and no problem, three points on the night. And what started out to look good for Toronto FC didn't necessarily end Toronto FC's way. Yeah, every game is not going to be a masterpiece. And it was one of those games where Toronto FC was just a little lethargic. Like, the one criticism I'd have on Tor for Toronto FC on this night is that they didn't play at the pace that was needed to break down a team that you know is very good defensively. They're going to get 11 players behind the ball basically at all times. And how you beat that is putting high pressure on the ball, forcing turnovers, or picking up the pace, picking up the tempo. And when they started and scored the goal in the fifth minute, it came from Victor Vasquez pushing the tempo, trying to find Seba behind the back line. And when you do that, good things happen because the defense is forced to scramble. But for me, they took it easy on Colorado a little bit, let them off the hook for playing so cautious, so defensive. So I think it's something that the team can learn from here tonight. Yes, Colorado was coming in after having 18 days off and Toronto FC just played on Wednesday night. Night. but for me just in terms of quality in terms of what these teams are all about it was one-way traffic for the vast majority of this match it was just TFC's inability to finish off the game assistant coach Robin Frazier says that Toronto FC wasn't at their best tonight turnovers are momentum killers and obviously uh, a turnover that leads to something like that is is, is tough to come back from but um, yeah it was just it was it was just not us at our best it was Ashton Morgan on Wednesday night who got his first ever Toronto FC goal. And then yeah. tonight we see Jay Chapman's first uh, Toronto FC goal. And what a goal that was. Let's talk about that. I, I mean, he thought he had one on Wednesday I night know. as well. Is that not meant to be? Well, now we can sleep at night, <laughs> I, I think. Know. You know, because just waiting for that first goal, it's a very difficult ask. And look, he'll tell his kids years from now <laughs> what a great glatzo it actually was. It was a little tap in, but it doesn't matter how, it matters how many. So congratulations to Chapman tonight. I thought he was pretty good on the night as well, playing alongside yeah. Victor Vasquez for a change. And honestly, he split the defenders in the second half. It was an incredible move, got his way into the area. And the referee, Juan Guzman Jr., who I thought really struggled tonight, should have awarded a penalty because Chapman was taken down from behind. Instead, he took the easy way out because he played advantage because Chapman was fouled earlier, so he brought it back outside the area. For me, that was a stonewall penalty, and Guzman took the easy way out by not awarding it. But I thought Chapman was decent, but he'll always remember his first goal, and you know what that means so much to a local player. Absolutely, and you know, speaking of Ashton Morgan, we said that he got his first ever Toronto FC goal. He's been battling back from injury. That's mm -hmm. not easy. He's finally back on the pitch, and tonight he celebrated a pretty big milestone. Yeah, he joined the Century Club, <laughs> which means a lot, something very different from when I was in university, because now he's played 100, of, he's had 100 appearances with the first team in MLS play. I mean, he's done that overall in other competitions, but for his 100th MLS appearance, it just shows you how hard this guy's fought to remain in the team, and when it happens to a Toronto boy, it means that much more. We have two great goalkeepers between Alex Bono and Clint Irwin, and it's tough because sometimes one gets minutes, the other one's, the other one doesn't but today we saw Clint Irwin and he made a couple big saves that kept Toronto FC in the game. The huge reaction save in the second half was fitting to the night that he had. I thought he was good on the night. Wasn't challenged that much but he was solid but I like it after Benoit Shiru came out of the game the captain's armband yeah. went on Clint Irwin. The fact that he used to play for the Colorado Rapids that just shows the awareness that these players on this team are fighting for one another. Gareth you and I both played and as spectators tonight but playing in the past, we could tell that this must have been a frustrating game for Toronto oh. FC players to play in. So. Yeah, I wanted to bring this up because you can say the man of the match for the Colorado Rapids was the stretcher because that was used more than anything else. It's incredible how a team with over two weeks off cramps as much as that team did. Listen, I'd never want to accuse a player of deceiving the game, but that's what we were seeing tonight. Colorado was playing for the away point. That was just like a victory for them who now climb out of the basement in MLS. This is the problem though. All the 30,000 or whatever that were here tonight, you're not watching this game to see players sit down and stretch out cramps. Right. You're here to see free-flowing, attractive football. And that's a detriment to anyone that's watching that game, seeing so many stoppages over the last 10, 15 minutes after Colorado scored. It was a farce for me, and it took the complete flow and momentum out of the game. So I don't, 
I, I don't blame the fans for feeling upset. I really blame the match official for not holding Colorado accountable. We sometimes see referees go to the cards so early to punish, you know, um, players not getting on with the play. But tonight, he wasn't willing to do anything about it. So it played into Colorado's favor and made for a real difficult watch over the last 20. Now, good news for Toronto FC that they are at the top of the MLS standings, yep. which is great because Chicago today lost to NYCFC. And now they are staying at home. Their next game is on Sunday, July 30th at 2 o'clock p.m. against NYCFC, a little bit of a rematch. So but for any updates on your team, visit torontofc.ca.